Hi everyone, this is Mrs. Campbell and welcome to our first lesson of chapter three. We begin today's lesson in talking about something called composition of functions. We're gonna talk about where what that is, how you do it, and where such things exist in this lesson. Please begin by putting the date in the upper left-hand corner of your notes and you probably are gonna want a calculator, so why don't you grab one of those as well, and then we're gonna go ahead and begin. So, as we start today, and you know, at any time that you need to hit the pause button, you know, by all means do that, hit the pause and go do what you need to do and then come back. So, as we start today, I am going to write a function and I want you to be thinking about and guessing what that function is. So I have here a set of numbers, this is gonna be my domain, my input values are one, four, and six. My output values are going to be 2, 8, and 12. And I'm going to call that function that does this, takes on this role as the function I'm going to call f. So it's f of x. Can you name what that function is? What is my function doing? Oh, if you said it is the function that doubles your input, you would be absolutely correct. So the function f is a function that doubles it. So I'm going to write here f of x takes the input value of x and doubles it. So f of x, <coughs> excuse me, is 2x. That looks sort of sloppy, but I think you get the idea. All right, now I'm going to apply a second function to it. And this function, I'm going to call function g. And in this function, I'm going to take these inputs, which were my um, original outputs, the 2, 8, and 12. Those are going to be my inputs for G. And I'm going to do something to them. And you tell me what I'm doing. So I'm going to write down their outputs. They are 5, 11, and 15. That's the function G. Did you figure out what I did? Well, if you said that G of X is the function that takes your input value and adds three, you would be correct. Today what we're going to talk about is something called the composition function, the composition of two functions. The composition of two functions is a function that takes these inputs and does both operations at the same time. So it bypasses two separate ones, it embeds one with the other. This function is called the function that takes f of x and applies g to that. That is g of f of x. And that's what this function is. It is the function that I've written right here. That is g of f of X. And in our case, it is the function that first doubles the value of x and then adds 3. So instead of doing two separate functions, it does it all at once. Let's try it out. If you plug in a 1, for example, into that rule, 2 times 1 is 2, add 3, what do you get? You get 5. It takes you all the way through both functions at the same time. If you did 4, 2 times 4 is 8, 8 and 3 is 11, you get that. All right, now that is a function. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch the order and see what happens. So what happens if I switch the order of my functions? Instead of doing f first, I am going to do g first. Do you remember what the function g is? g, remember, is the function that adds 3. So if I take 1 and add 3, that's going to be 4. If I take 4 and add 3, that's going to give me 7. If I take 6 and add 3, that's going to give me 9. That is the function g of x. Input of 1, 4, 6, output of 4, 7, 9. The other function, which we called f, is now going to be applied. And remember, f was the function that doubled the input. So I'm going to use these new numbers as input, these numbers right here. These are going to be my inputs. And I'm going to double those. And that would give me numbers of 8, 14, and 18. Now the first question I might ask you is, does order matter? When you did f of x and then g of x, is that the same as if you do g of x and then f of x? And the answer, of course, is no. So this function is the function that takes g of x, it applies the function g, and to that 
applies the function f. So that is red f of g oops, of x. And it is the function that takes whatever input you have, it adds 3, and then it doubles it. So today we are looking at what we refer to as composition. Sometimes I refer to that as a nesting function. That is, you put one function inside the other. And you might notice off to the side here I have an example of nesting drawn. This picture represents Russian nesting dolls. I don't know if you've ever seen these before, but these nesting dolls, this little doll fits inside this one, and this, this doll fits inside this one, and that one fits inside this one, and you're putting one doll in inside another. Those are called nesting dolls. Well, that's what these are. These are nesting functions. So if I want to do f of g of 2, for example, that means I want to find a value that I'm going to begin by putting the 2 into the function g, and then I'm going to take that result and put it into the function f. Here's how I'm going to write that. I'm going to start with the innermost function, g of 2, and I'm going to write f of, and I'm going to go to this g of 2, and I'm going to go to that equation, and I'm going to replace that x with a 2. So this would become 2 times 2 plus 1. And that becomes 4 plus 1, that's 5. That becomes f of 5. So now I'm going to go to the other function f. So you start on the innermost, and you plug in the 5 into the function f. That would become 3 times 5 minus 5. Well, that's 15 minus 5, and that would give us an answer of 10. So you can do one function and then the other function. Now let me show you another way to do that. Right below it, I am going to create a function called the composite function f of g of x. And I'm going to do that very same thing, only I'm not going to put in a 2 this time. I'm going to figure out what the function is. So the function is starts with the g of x. So I'm going to replace g of x with what it's equal to. That function g of x is right here. It's 2x plus 1. I'm going to replace that right here, and I'm going to write 2x plus 1. And then I'm going to go to the function called f, and I'm going to replace the x value with 2x plus 1. Now I go to the function called f. Here's the x. I'm going to replace that x with 2x plus 1. Now that function says take 3, multiply it by my new x value, which is actually 2x plus 1, and then subtract 5. And when you do, you'll get, distributing the 3, 6x plus 3 minus 5. And then combining like terms, that would give you 6x minus 2. Now, here is the difference between question number 1 and question number 2. In question number 1, I plugged in a specific value of x and I came up with a number. In question number 2, I left it as an x and I came up with a function. This function is a function that does g and then it does f. So if I were to say, now, what is f of g of 2, all I'd have to do is put a 2 in right here. And let's see what happens when we do. We would get 6 times 2 minus 2, that's 12 minus 2, or 10. Notice the answer is the same. So you can do them as two separate functions, one after another, or you can write the composite function and then apply it once. The composite function nests the two functions together. Let's try that differently with our second example. Let's do this. Let's do g of f of x. So I'm going to start down here. And I'm going to create the function that nests f of x into g of x. So I'll write g and I'm going to replace f of x with what it's equal to. Now, f of x is equal to, and I'm going to try to erase because I wrote on this before. Um, f of x is equal to 3x minus 5, so I'm going to write 3x minus 5. And then I'm going to go to the function called g. Here's the function called g. I'm going to replace the x, that's what this says, with this whole thing, 2x plus 1. So this is going to become... 2, I think I said that weird, by the way. I'm not sure what I said. I think I might have said it wrong. In the 2x plus 1, I'm going to replace the x 
with 3x minus 5. I don't think I said that correctly, so I'm saying it again. Uh, 3x minus 5 is getting replaced in the function called t, and then I'm going to add 1. When I do, I'm distributing, I will get 6x minus 10 plus 1, which would become 6x minus 9. <clears throat> Now I can use this new function that I created, which is the composite function, the composition of the two, and I can go back to that first example, and I can just replace the x with a 2. See, these two things are the same, except here I want the x to be 2. So all I have to do is use that composite function, 6x minus 9, replace the x with a 2, and get an answer of 3. Today's lesson is all about building, creating the composite function. That is this. In other words, nesting one function into another and then using that function to find a particular value. All right, let's practice that. In our next example, and I'm going to do these a little bit out of order here. In our next example, we are asked to find four different things using the functions h and g. I am going to ask you to do them in this order. The first thing I want to do is create the composite function. That is, these two things, those are going to be creating of a function. And then we'll go backwards and actually use that function to find a specific value of, of x. So for the first one, t of h of x. Start on the innermost thing. Write down h of x. h of x is x squared plus 1. This says go to the function called g, and we're going to take the x squared plus 1 and plug it into g. So we're putting h into g, so this is going into this. That will give me two parentheses, plugging in the x squared plus 1 now, putting that function into the function called g, and then since g has a plus 1 at the end, I have to write a plus 1 here as well. And that will then give us... 2x squared plus 2 when you distribute, plus 1, and when you simplify, 2x squared plus 3 it is. This is a function which nests or combines, puts them together, um, h, um, x, h of x into g of x. Now I can use that function. So when I go back to the question right before it, it says g of h of 3. Well, g of h of x is 2x squared plus 3. So g of h of 3 is 2 times 3 squared plus 3. And of course, PEMDAS, order of operations, tells us to square first, multiply next, and then do your adding. And that's our answer. I'd like you to go ahead and try the next one on your own. So this one is a different order. It says h of g of x. And does order matter, do you suppose? And the answer is, of course it does. Order matters here. We want to make sure we do it in the correct order. So please hit the pause button and do that problem on your own. And then when you're done, hit play. And I'm going to do it again as well. And we'll see if we match. So this is sort of a self-test. Go ahead and do that now. So... Let's see how you did. If I do the work, and this is the work I'm going to show, I'm going to start with g of x, which is the innermost function. That is 2x plus 1. I'm going to plug that into the function called h of x. That is 2x plus 1 squared because the x is squared here, and then plus 1. Now, if you clean that up a little bit, make that look nicer, we often will do that. One way to do that would be with a generic rectangle. You could, if you wanted, and this is going to be up to you, you could go 2x plus 1, 2x plus 1, multiply all the parts together and get that spread out. Or you could do 2x plus 1 multiplied by 2x plus 1 and use the distributive property twice. You pick how you want to do that. You get the same result either way. Um, I'll show you my result when I do it. I would go I would go with the distributed property. That's my choice. 2x times 2x would be 4x squared, so I'm going to write that down here. That's the same thing you get when you do 2x times 2x. You get 4x squared here. Then you do 2x times... Um, 
times 1 and then 1 times 2x. I guess that's going to be my next one. So 2x times 1 is 2x, and 1 times 2x is also 2x. That's going to add to 4x. That would be, of course, this 2x and this 2x. And then additionally, we'd have 1 times 1, and that's just going to be 1, which is this part right here. And then we have that additional 1, that's this one right here. So cleaning it up, it would become 4x squared plus 4x plus 2. That is the composite function. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use that composite function. Am I expecting to get an answer of 21? No, I'm not, because when you do it in a different order, you get different results. So what does this become? It becomes 4 times 3 squared plus 4 times 3 plus 2, which is, using the order of operations, square the 3, that's 4 times 9, do the multiplications. I can do them at the same time. So 36 plus 12 plus 2, and then do the adding. 36 and 12 is 48, and two more looks like 50 it is, and 50 is my final answer. All right, let's go again, guys. We're on a roll here. Let's try one more example together, and let me see if I can have you start this one again on your own. So for this next example, I'd like you to do this right now and then see if we match, okay? So go ahead and begin. All right, I'm gonna do it now too and see how we go. So I start on the innermost thing, which is the square root of x plus four, just replacing g of x with what it's equal to. Then I'm gonna to go to the function f and I'm gonna replace every x, and there's just one there, with the square root of x plus four. So I'll have the square root of x plus four, but that x is squared, so I'm gonna be squaring it. That's what this says right here. And then I'm gonna subtract four. And when I do, hmm, something kind of weird happens. The square of a square root. Square rooting and squaring are inverse operations. They undo each other. That's going to give me just x plus 4. And then there's that minus 4 that hangs off the end. And when you combine that, you end up with just a plain old x. That's kind of interesting. So when you do f of g of 5 and you plug a 5 into that equation, you just get 5. That's it. All right? If you haven't already done so, try the next one. Now you can see, of course, that I'm doing the work as well. And the same kind of weird thing happens. I ended up with the square root of x squared minus 4 plus 4. The 4 is just zeroed out, leaving me with the square root of x squared. The square root and the square undo each other, giving me just an x. So it's the same kind of a thing. So g of f of 5 is, again, 5. Well, that's kind of weird because this time... We got the same function, we also got the same result. And that leads us into something that we're going to be focusing our attention on tomorrow. These, uh, says here, functions that undo each other, which these did, because we started with a 5, we applied f and then applied g and got 5 back. Here we started with a 5, applied g, then applied f, got a 5 back. Then it means they undid each other. Those are called inverses. Inverse functions are functions that undo each other. All right, that leads us into our final example today. Our final example is a word problem. And so we have to kind of make sense out of exactly what it is that we are getting when we do um, composition. So let's read this one together, example four. The weekly cost of producing X units in a manufacturing process is given by the function C of X equals 40X, excuse me, 48X plus 1,150. The number of units produced in t hours is given by the equation x of t equals 42 t. Find and interpret c of x of t. Goodness, there's a lot going on there. Let's see if we can't just make some sense out of the letters. So the first letter I see here is the letter c. It says the weekly cost of producing x units, c, stands for cost. That's what that first function is all about. And x we are told, is the number of units. 
So cost is a function of the number of units. It's determined by how many units you produce. And furthermore, the number of units produced in T hours, so there's another letter, T is the number of hours, is given by the equation x of t equals 40t, which means that the number of units is a function of how many hours we work. So in the end, it kind of makes sense that if you work more hours, you're going to produce more units, and if you produce more units, it's going to cost more money. So we have a function that I could say, for example, if I said, well, we're going to work for two hours, how many units are we going to produce? And you would go to this equation and you'd say, if I work for two hours, then my units would be 40 times 2. I've made 80 units. And I'd say, so what's your cost? And you'd go to this equation and you'd say, well, if I've got 80 units, then it's 48 times 80 plus 1150. So we can do that using separate pieces, or we can find the composite equation and do it all at once. And that's what we're going to do. So I am going to find C of X of T, and I'll start by replacing x of t with what it's equal to. In the, equa excuse me, in the equation, we're told that x of t is 40t. And then I'm going to go to the function cost, and I'm going to replace every x with 40t. The equation for cost is equal to 48 times 40t, making that replacement, plus 1150. Now, I can't do that in my head, so I am reaching for my calculator. Thought maybe I needed it at some point. Here we go. I'm going to do 40 times 40. Darn, I'm struggling with the calculator here. Um, 1920. So what is this equation? This is equi an equation that writes cost as a function of time. In other words, do I need to know how many units are produced? The answer is no. So the original equation gives us cost as a function of number of units, and number of units as a function of time. This equation, the composite equation, bypasses the number of units and gives us cost as a function of time. And that takes us to the end of our lesson, guys, and then the homework comes along with it. So what I'm going to ask you to do in the homework assignment, of course, 3A, um, I don't know if there's enough room here. I guess it says to do it on other paper. But remember, you're submitting everything, so your work and your homework, and then it goes on to another page. So finish that one up, guys. If you have questions, don't hesitate to ask. Check the answers if you need to, and we'll see you next time. Good luck, everybody.